Hey fellow Backyard Boyers, Nick here. Today I'm going to show you how I made this CSGO inspired gut knife. I sketched out a template based on some pictures I found online and then transferred it to a 3 16 thick piece of 1095 spring steel. This is what I'm going to be making my knife out of. Once the template is traced out, I use a cutoff wheel with my angle grinder to cut the knife down to shape. An easy way to get into the recessed areas of the handle is to cut several small slits called relief cuts. By cutting these cuts down to the line, you can then come back at an angle and really clean up the shape so that there's not a lot of grinding needed afterward. I repeat this on the front of the knife to cut out what will become the gut hook. Next I switch to a grinding disc to grind all the rough edges and bring everything down to the lines. I especially pay attention to the gut hook area because I'm going to be doing all of my major shaping right now with the grinding wheel. So that involves bringing everything down to the lines and starting the bevels on both sides. I'm just eyeballing this and making sure that both sides appear to be fairly equal. Next I use a sharpie to draw in my grind lines and I've also gone ahead and ground a center line so I can use it to align the edge so that it runs nice and straight down the blade. I go back to the grinding wheel and start by roughing a roughly 45 degree angle down to the edge line and then from there flattening out the bevel until I've reached my grind lines. Then I switch to a flap sanding disc to flatten out and smooth the bevel. Next I use a file to follow the existing bevel and just remove any high spots to prepare for hand sanding. Then I follow up with a sanding block just to make everything nice and even and uniform. I then switch to sanding the flats of the blade just to clean it up. You can see that I mostly sand along the blade, but when it comes to the base of the blade, I sometimes have to sand perpendicular just to get out some of the heavier scratches from the grinding and the filing. Once everything's been rough sanded, I switch to a finer grit sandpaper just to give everything a nice finish prior to heat treat. I use a sharpie to mark in where all of the handle holes and the jimping and cutouts are going to be on the blade. I use a cutoff wheel just to rough in the choil at the base of the blade. And once that's done, I go ahead and rough in all of the jimping on the back of the blade and on the back of the handle. Once I've got everything roughed in, I use an eighth inch round file to clean everything up and finish off the jimping. So you can see everything's finished up, the choil's done, and the jimping on the back of the blade and the handle. I also take the time now before hardening the blade to clean out the finger grip area because that can be kind of hard to get to with the types of sanding machines I have. And then I use a cobalt drill bit to drill all of my handle holes. Once all the holes are drilled, I use a countersink just to deburr the holes. 
And finally, I finish up the handle with a piece of sandpaper just to smooth everything out and also get rid of any sharp edges before heat treating. So the knife is just about ready for hardening and tempering. I'm just going to use some sandpaper and finish all my flats and my bevels before getting into the heat treatment. It's easier to get rid of any deep scratches now while the steel is still soft. Now it's time to fire up the forge and let it come up to temperature. I use a pair of tongs to hold the blade in place as I pass it into my forge in front of the heat source. I heat it up concentrating mainly on the base of the blade so that everything heats up evenly until it no longer sticks to a magnet. I take it a little further and then quench it in oil. Next I use some wet dry sandpaper to clean off all of the scale on the blade. Once the blade is nice and clean, I use a small propane torch to heat up the spine of the knife. I'm going to be doing some selective tempering, just softening some areas that may break, like this little protrusion on the gut hook that's a spot that could easily snap so I'm just trying to take some of the hardness out of it and you can see that blue color is a spring temper I'm trying to get something of a spring temper in the handle and the transitions but I want the blade itself to be something of a very light straw color after that I clean off the blade and prepare for handle scales I'm using a piece of Brazilian cherry hardwood flooring for my handle scales because they'll give me that nice orange color that you see in game on the vanilla knife. I cut out both handle scales using my scroll saw, though a hacksaw or coping saw blade would work as well. Next, I use the holes already in the tang of the knife as a template for drilling my handle holes, and I work one scale at a time. Once I've drilled out the first scale, I flip it over and use pins to help index it with the next. That way, once I'm done, the pins will go all the way through, and everything will be nice and straight. Now, since the handle on this knife is actually recessed, I use my scroll saw to cut away some of the excess. And then I also go in and split the scales in half because they're a lot thicker than I need them to be. Once I've trimmed the excess, it's time to shape the handles and start finishing. So I pin both handle scales together and use my sanding disc just to rough everything out, smooth everything down. Once the profile looks right, I start working on each scale individually to add a little bit of depth and round off all the edges. Next, I countersink all of the pinholes in the handle scales before going on to hand sanding. Starting with 80 grit sandpaper, I remove all of the sanding and grinding marks and work my way up to a nice matte finish. So now that the scales are done, I fit the pins in place and figure out how far they stick out on one side, then trim them to fit. The knife is now ready to assemble. Now it's time to glue the handle scales in place. 
I use some two-part epoxy and coat both of the handle scales. Once the handle scales are covered in epoxy, I put everything in place and then use the pins to secure everything together. I use a little bit of epoxy on the pins to keep any moisture out of the handle and then clamp it up to let it cure. Once the epoxy is cured, the knife is finished. I hope you enjoyed building this knife with me today. If you like this video, be sure to check out my channel for more videos like this. And I've also written several books on different topics and you can check out the links to those in the description below. So here's the knife all finished up. As always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.